And now, of course, we have Sammy Wilson. I caught up with him outside today, where it became clear that the grass was the only green thing around. I began by asking him if he agreed that mankind was to blame for climate change. I believe that CO2 gases may have some impact, but I don't think it has a major impact. And I don't think that we should be giving the kind of undue emphasis on reducing CO2 emissions um, in order to uh, provide an answer to climate change. The, cl the climate is certainly changing, but I believe that it's, uh, a lot of that is due, and there's a lot of scientific uh, evidence of, of this as well, a lot of it is due to factors beyond the control of man. But the scientific consensus is that they do, and they are the significant factor. Are you a flat earthist on this? No, I'm not a flat earth earthist, but um, I also know that there's considerable uh, scientific evidence uh, which says that there are inevitable changes uh, which occur over the, the, the periods of hundreds of years uh, which lead to changes in climate and you know if you only have to look at the history of the United Kingdom where uh, you know, a thousand years ago they were growing grapes in Scotland, 300 years ago they were skating on the Thames nearly every uh, winter because you had uh, many ice ages and you had periods of very very warm weather and I mean those are natural cycles and I don't think that uh, by uh, altering uh, CO2 emissions that we're going to have much impact on that and of course if you look at all of the effort which goes into see reducing CO2 emissions given that Northern Ireland produces about 3% of the CO2 emissions of the, uh, for the United Kingdom as a whole and the United Kingdom produces 3% of the world's total uh, for the massive effort which goes in to changing people's behaviour uh, you've got to ask what impact will it have on climate change anyway. So when we look at the DUP policy on things like the Environmental Protection Agency, is this a party that's saying environment doesn't matter, in fact it should be a free-for-all for development and uh, economic growth? No, it certainly isn't. It's a, a party which says that the environment is one consideration when deciding how you run a modern economy and you cannot sacrifice economic growth, you cannot sacrifice the building of houses, you cannot sacrifice jobs, you cannot sacrifice people's own personal uh, financial welfare to uh, some theory which uh, has been promoted vigorously by some scientists and which has almost become like a quasi-religion quasi with some people, you know, where everything has to be um, subservient to their view of climate change. Uh, I think that what you get with the DUP is a balanced approach to the economy, to the environment and to the context in which we live. And yet those that are in the environmental and green movement uh, see your uh, outlook as anything but balanced. You are their bet noir. Appointing you as environment minister is, is like a two-fingered salute to the green movement. Well, and of course, they're equally um, very focused on their little uh, view of, of uh, what is important in life. I think that uh, politicians have to take a much wider view of uh, how you run an economy and how you run a country. And those, of course, who uh, immerse themselves in the environmental, and I don't blame them for it. I mean, if that's, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. But when they immerse themselves in environmental organisations like that, of course they become totally focused on the things which concern them and sometimes blinkered to the impact which the, the policies which they demand will have on ordinary people. I mean, for example, I, mean, we've just, I, I, I took a part in a debate on this in, in Westminster. As a result of the, um, the, the, the focus which environmentalists have now on CO2 emissions, people usually, and many of the Labour Party members are, are, are saying this, people who own cars which are seven or eight years old are now going to find that their, their road tax will double so that they're paying um, what up to £400 to tax their road, uh, their car, £8 a week. Um, now, and, and that's in some attempt to please environmentalists who say that those cars are too polluting so you should price people out of them. But the very people you're pricing out of them are people who are probably just about able to afford a car and you push them out of their own private transport and leave them without anything. Uh, so, you know, I think that you've got to be very careful when you uh, take uh, you know, some of these policies to their extreme, that you don't damage individuals and damage individuals who perhaps are not uh, as well off as some of those who are promoting these policies. Are you willing to try and persuade those in the green environmental lobby that maybe you're not as bad as they think you are? 
I think I'll, I'll let them judge by the actions which I take as a minister. And as I've said, I intend to take um, decisions which are balanced, which balance development with protection of the economy. Um, sometimes that will, uh, uh, will annoy uh, maybe developers because they'll think I'm too, uh, given too much cognizance to the environment. Sometimes it'll annoy environmentalists. But I hope that those decisions will always be taken with all of the facts and, uh, in, in, in mind and not just the things which uh, particular f well focused lobby groups would like you to take into consideration. Now you're going to be a busy man, MP. MLA, uh, Belfast City Councillor and now Minister. Uh, are you going to resign uh, your council seat? Well, I think that there probably is, uh, especially in the job which I have, where um, it's a, one of the jobs is control of councils and uh, regulation of councils. There probably is a conflict of interest there. And I've already, I think yesterday, declared my intention to resign that post at the earliest possible opportunity. And will that force uh, an election, or do you think uh, co-opting is an option? Well, uh, it, I'm hoping to bring f through legislation which will um, allow for co-options in all of these uh, situations. I think that given the fact we're going to have new councils in 2011, we're going to have shadow councils uh, before that, uh, there's no point in forcing expensive by-elections and um, I would hope that we would be able to get that legislation through fairly quickly because there are probably many, of, many other people who are in a similar situation to myself who have maybe decided that their time in local government is uh, now finished, want to move move on and um, there's no need to cause unnecessary by, uh, unnecessary by elections. We, we have always had a policy in Belfast City Council uh, for the last six years uh, that uh, when there was a resignation or a death or whatever uh, that you didn't have um, a, a, a by-election, you did a co-option, but it's always been a gentleman's agreement. I would rather have that ensconced in regulations so that we don't have to have unnecessary by-elections. Will you have that in place then before you resign? I'd hope so. Thanks very much, Sammy Wilson. Okay, thank you. The new Environment Minister, Sammy Wilson, who for technical reasons there was looking a little bit more green than he might have liked. Uh, apologies for that.